Let's take a look now at section 6.2, which deals with the area under a normal distribution. So you might be thinking, why do we care about area? Well, in statistics, quite often we have distributions that are normal or approximately normal, which means that we can use the characteristics of a normal distribution to help us find the probability. And the reason that we can do that is that the area under any part of the normal curve is equal to the probability of the random variable falling within that region. So what does all of that mean? That means if I want to find the probability that x, I'm sorry, that z is greater than 1.3, then all I have to do is find the area. So if this is 0 and this is 1, 1 1.3 is here. If I want to find this probability, all I have to do is find this area. And so technically, there's some calculus involved in that because that's how we find the area under a curve. However, we don't have to do the calculus. We don't have to understand that whole part of it. So if you're not a mathy person, that's okay because you don't have to use calculus. We can use technology or the standard normal table which will find the values for us. So really what you need to understand is if we're trying to find the area to the left, that's the same as finding the probability that x is less than some value, and the probability to the right is the same as the area to the right of some value. And again, because the normal curve can have infinitely many parameters, so as many means as we can think of, as many standard de deviations as we can think of. We would have to have separate probabilities for all of that, but remember what we just talked about with the uh, standard normal distribution? If we know that, that has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, and that makes it really stinking easy. So there's a lot of ways that you can use to find probability slash area in the standard normal distribution. We are going to focus on the use of Excel, but I'm going to very quickly show you um, what a Z table looks like. So for instance, let's say I want to find the probability that my Z score is less than 0.31. So again, to give you a visual, if I have the normal model, zeros in the middle, 0.31, so one's here, 0.31 is about right here. If I'm trying to find the area to the left, well, I know it should be greater than 0.5. And again, I can use a standard normal table. That's what this is. Um, your textbook has the standard normal tables for you in table A and table B in appendix A. And it's also a handout in the course. I am not going to focus on that because we're focusing on the use of Excel. But quickly, just so you can see what I would do, 0.31, I would find 0.3 here and then 0.01 because if I added 0.3 and 0.01, I would get 0.31. And then where those two intersect is my correct um, area to the left. So it's always to the left. That means if we find anything to the right or between two values or in the tails, you have to be the one smart enough to know how to manipulate that. But for now, just know that the correct solution is 0.6217. Now let's take a look at how to use Excel. Now keep in mind, Excel is going to find the area to the left by default. So that's good because that's what we're doing is finding the area to the left. Let's look at the question we just did, 0.31. We just found this with our standard normal table, but let's see how Excel calculates for us. I'm going to use norm.s.dist and the S simply tells Excel that this is the standard normal distribution. So I'm using a Z score and that's my only input and then always one for cumulative. And so notice I found the same answer that I had found using the table. And again, I can just repeat that over and over for anything that I'm finding to the left. And then remember always comma one. And whenever you do this, you should always think about whether your solution makes sense. So before I do that last question, let's think about the normal distribution. And 0.31 is just a little bit to the right. And if I'm going to the left of that, that should be just over 50%. So 62% makes sense. 
whereas 1.37 is further over here. And so now 0.9146, again, out of one, because this is a total of one, right? So we're saying 91% of this is shaded, and that makes sense. And then if I think about negative 2.03, that's somewhere over here, so I should get a really, really small solution. So let's take a look. Norm S dist Z score comma one. And that's a very small value. Now, again, I always encourage you to use Excel to make your job easier. So for instance, if I want to just create an input where I put the Z score, and have the area to the left pop out, I can do that. So making it a more standard or generic formula, norm s dist of whatever I put in for f1, comma, 1. So now I can find 1.37, I can find that solution very easily, negative 2.03, and so on. Now I want to take a look at the area to the right. And before we just hop into it and use the function, I want to talk about why it makes sense. So if I think about my, pretend that's a normal distribution, and remember that I'm looking at a z-score of 0.31, which is maybe somewhere in here. Now, previously, I found this area to the left, which was, you know, a little bit greater than 50%. Now I want to find the area to the right of that. So I'm going to use the fact that the sum of this curve is one. And since Excel always finds the area to the left, I'm just going to take one minus the area to the left to find the area to the right. Now the good news is we just found out in our last uh, slide how to find the area to the left. So to find the area to the right, I'm simply going to put one minus norm s dist z score comma one and again that makes perfect sense 0.378 smaller than 50 percent and it's if you look back at your last example one minus the last solution is this solution same is going to go here um, equals one minus norm s dist z-score, cumulative is 1. So again, it's just calculating that area to the left and then subtracting it from 1. So if you'll recall, my last solution was about 90, you know, 2 percent, 91.5. And so this is the complement of that, 1 minus that. Last one, remember this was a very small value when we found the area to the left, so the area to the right should be very large. 1 minus norm s dist, and then our value comma 1. And again, very large area, large probability. Same thing I did before. This was norm s dist f1 comma 1. This is just 1 minus norm s dist f1 comma 1. So again, I can just make it generic. And if you'll notice, this gives the area to the left, this gives the area to the right, and those should always add up to 1. Same thing here, 1.37. Area to the left was our solution before, area to the right is our solution for this one. So you get the idea. Use Excel to your advantage. What we want to do now is find the area between two z-scores. So again, I always encourage you to try to understand it, not just here's the formula, let's use it, but let's visualize what exactly is happening. So for instance, for our first one, remember zero's here in the middle, and I've got negative 0.31, which is about right here, and positive 0.31, which is about right here. So the area between those two values is what we're trying to find. Now keep in mind that Excel always finds the area to the left. So this is negative 0.31, this is positive 0.31. Now if I used norm s dist of 0.31, it's going to give me all of the area to the left. 
And if I used it for negative 0.31, it's going to give me the area to the left, and I don't want the area to the left. What I do want is the area here in the middle. So essentially what we're going to do, hopefully you can try to visualize this, is if I found the area to the left of the, area, the one on the right, the greater value, always the greater, and then I subtracted that, subtracted from that, the area to the left of the smaller value, essentially it's going to take out all of the stuff that's yellow and black and keep the, all of the stuff that's only black, which was also pink here in the middle. Sorry for all of the extra colors. It's going to leave me with just that value. So again, we're taking all of this and then subtracting from here over, which leaves me just what's in the middle. So that's what we're going to do. Now again, these are z-scores, and so I'm going to use equals norm s dis, and you always do the larger one first. So 0.31 is greater than negative 0.31. So 0.31 comma 1, and then minus norm s dis negative 0.31 comma 1 and that's going to give me my solution. And the other way that you can use it would work for my first question and my second question, but not for my third. So I'm not really gonna stress that one, but I do wanna point out to you that, again, looking at my picture, don't you love when I just change everything up for you? Looking at my picture, if I found this area that happens to be the same as this area. So what I could do is find this area and take it times two and then subtract it from one. And that would leave me with just this part in the middle that wasn't shaded. So just to show you that it's the same, I could say equals one minus norm S dist. The one on the left is negative 0.31 comma one. Oh, and I forgot the two. <laughs> Sorry about that. Two times norm s dist, and then there we go. Now that's not the way I do it, again, because the only time that works is when you're dealing with the exact same value uh, on the left and on the right, just a different sign. Um, so it will work for a and b, but not for c. So for b, again, norm s dist, the bigger value is two, comma one for cumulative, minus norm s dist, the smaller value is negative two, comma one for cumulative, and that's 95.44%. And I chose this one specifically because we had spent some time with the empirical rule. And the empirical rule said if you have a normal model that between negative two and positive two is 95% of your values. And I just wanted to point out to you that it's almost 95%. So remember, we kept saying that, yes, the empirical rule is great, but it's just an estimate. So this shows you that it is an estimate because the correct value is 95.4499736, et cetera, percent. And then again, for my last value equals norm s dist of the larger value, 2.7, that's always the one on the right, comma 1 minus norm s dist, the smaller value, which is negative 0.4 comma 1. And then again, I'm not a big fan of having to type all of that out. So you can set up the norm s dist function for each of these. So for the first question, I had negative point, or sorry, the bigger one has to go first. So 0.31 and then negative 0.31 and notice I get the same answer again. So instead of having to continually type out norm s dist, I can just put 2.7, negative 0.4, and then again, have my solution much more quickly. For our last type of question, we're going to look at the area in the tails. And essentially what that means is exactly what we found before, it's one minus that. So you could do it in that way, um, but really what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to find the area to the right 
of the larger value and to the left of the smaller value. And so we already know how to do that. It, and then I'm just going to add them together. So if I wanted to find the area to the right of the larger value, remember the area to the right is one minus norm s dist, the value to the right, that's the larger one, 0.31 comma one. And then notice I'm going to close that parenthesis. So I've got two parentheses there. And then I'm just going to add to that norm s dist, and then I'm going to find the area to the left of negative 0.31 comma one. And that's my solution. Now keep in mind that that should be one minus the solution I found when I was looking at the area between those two values. So before I do B or C, let's take a look over here. We looked at between, which was the larger minus the smaller, the outside, I could take one minus that, or I could set it up the way I just did. One minus norm s dist for the larger, and then plus norm s dist for the smaller. So let's just make sure that we have it set up right. 0.31 is the larger, negative 0.31 is the smaller, and if you'll notice, that matches the solution I found. And then this should be the same answer that I got before for between. So again, I could continue doing that. It's just the same thing over and over, but let's just use our setup here. The bigger one is two, the smaller one is negative two, and that gives me the outside is 0 0.0455, the between is one minus that. And then real quick before I look at uh, the last one, I want to talk about the fact that again, I could find the area in one tail and then take it times two only for A and B where the two values are the same. I'm not gonna focus on that because I want you to have a strategy that works every single time. So again, for the last one, the larger value is 2.7, the smaller value is negative 0.4. And again, we would be looking at the value to the outside. Now I'm just going to stress one more time, I'm totally fine with you setting up your spreadsheets like this, but if you're doing this for a a uh, forum post or something, you need to make sure that you're specifying which value you're finding, either by highlighting or deleting the other values. Here are some practice questions for you to try. Again, we didn't have to calculate any z-scores. I just want you to find each of the probabilities. Um, I would like you to press pause. Try all of the solutions. When you're ready, press play to see how you did. So I am going to totally cheat on all of these. I'm going to use the spreadsheet that I've set up, which is how I would do it working through my certifications. If I wanted to find the area to the left, remember less than is to the left. I would just enter 1.45 here. Whoops, not there, up here, 1.45. And the area that I'm looking for is 0.92647 and so on. If I wanted to find the area to the right of negative 1.37, Again, I'm going to put that just in that first column because that is where I'm going to find left or right. So negative 1.37 to the right of that is 0.91465 and so on. If I'm looking at C, C is asking for the area between two values. So my bigger value here is 2.31. My smaller value is 1.25. And if I'm looking for between, that's 0 0.0952. Looking at D, that is an OR question. An OR question is going to be outside of the two values. And you can always graph these to take a look at what it looks like. But again, I would put the bigger value of 2.5 and the smaller value of negative 2.5 and I would get outside of 0 0.0124. Now I'm back over here because I just have one value, so negative 4.01, that's a less than, less than is to the left. That answer is essentially zero. We remember we talked about that before, take the decimal and move it five places to the left, so essentially zero. And then again, if I have um, to the left of 3.98, that's, essentially one, uh, sorry, to the left again is essentially one, but it's 0 0.99965 and so forth. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at probabilities in a normal distribution, which is essentially going to take what we learned in 6.1 and 6.2 and put it together.